In the last couple of videos, we have been playing with some small, strange, and weird lol bins, or living off the land binaries, or programs, or applications, or just weird tricks and techniques that might allow us, as a red teamer, penetration tester, ethical hacker, or just someone doing weird stuff on a computer, to execute code or run software in a different way that looks like it's sort of masqueraded or camouflaged or different than how you might normally invoke it. And that's been a little bit of fun. Like, I'll be the first to admit, these don't always have functional purposes and reasonings to do them, other than just maybe oftentimes the fact that it's cool and it's interesting. And that is what I would like to drive down again for this video today. I'd like to showcase how we might be able to use, sometimes, in some cases, Internet Explorer as a lol bin or living off the land binary. But first, when you work in a business, it only takes one click from someone on your team to fall for a phishing scam. Whether it be from an email, social media, or text message, that one click can quickly lead to company data and customer records being hacked or stolen. The average cost for a single business that made one of these mistakes in 2022 is roughly $200,000. But these mistakes can be prevented by using Guardio. Guardio is a safe security browser extension that's designed to protect your team from online scams and identity theft. Guardio blocks phishing attempts that target your business, prevents team members from installing malware, and keeps you updated on information leaks related to your business domain. Guardio makes enterprise-level security accessible for every small business. It's super easy to set up, just check out my link in the video description and your business will be protected in a matter of minutes. You can see how many information leaks there were on a domain level and see which team members are protected and which aren't. All team members will enjoy Guardio's browser and identity protection, phishing email protection, and one admin can oversee any threats the company needs to take care of. There are more than 1 million users trusting Guardio to help keep their web browsing safe. And Guardio has a 4.5 review rating on Trustpilot with more than 1,000 reviews. Keep your business or your team safe. Use my link in the video description and start a free 14-day trial with Guardio. Huge thanks to Guardio for sponsoring this video. Okay, so here we are on my computer screen. For this video, I am gonna be interacting with my host computer. This is my desktop currently running Windows 10. I will be bebopping into another virtual machine to check this out in Windows 11. But first things first, credit where credit is due. This comes with a sweet shout out for Wade Hickey or Wiki or not Wiki on Twitter. And he had suggested, hey, have you ever considered Internet Explorer to be a low bit or living off the land binary? By navigating to this URL, URI shell colon 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 open curly brace 3 f6 bc 534 yada 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 you can spawn the system restore utility if you modify the system root environment variable you could copy over any dll's that might be necessary for applications and you can honestly just run whatever you'd like and i thought that's really weird. That's kind of interesting. So let me showcase this right away to kind of see it in action, and then we'll explore a little bit more as to what the heck this all is. Uh, but ultimately, let's see if we can fire this thing off. So we need Internet Explorer to be able to kind of fire this to begin with, given this argument or URI that we want to connect to and really use here. He invokes this in the screenshot with start, I explore, and then shell, colon, colon, colon all this nonsense, yada, yada, yada. So, hey, let me get to my desktop. I'll open up a command prompt, cmd.exe, and I'll zoom in here so I could try to start iExplore just on its own, right? There's no trailing R uh, for like, you might enter Explorer for the file explorer. Nope, for Internet Explorer, you just need iExplore. And I'll hit enter, not providing any arguments this time. Hey, that pops open Internet Explorer. And of course, Microsoft is going to want to sell me on running Edge as quickly as possible. Please leave me alone. I don't actually want to use Internet Explorer. It was all just a meme. It was all just a joke. Now, let's try to run iExplore or Internet Explorer with this argument that I've right-clicked and pasted into my terminal here. You'll note that Internet Explorer pops up for a moment, but then the system restore application fires off. Cool, 
Okay, so where is that application? And we can actually go find that if I run where on the Linux command line. Saw a sweet YouTube comment, huge shout out to whoever left that, that you know, the which command in Linux or in that Unix world will show you where on the file system this binary application is trying to run actually resides. Where is the command for that within Windows? So if I want to search for RSTR, restore UI or the user interface for system restore.exe. This will tell me it is in C Windows System 32 RSTR UI.exe. However, uh, Wade in his tweet was suggesting, look, if you had control over the system root environment variable, which is naturally the default C colon backslash Windows. However, you typically have the opportunity to change that or manipulate that because you're just inside of this given interactive access of the command line already, right? So, hey, if it doesn't, you know, might not always be in every single scenario, but please do some suspended disbelief with me here. Because what if we were to try and create our system root, actually set that to our own temporary directory? Let's go ahead and move into temp. There we go. Now I'm in app, data, local, temp, whatever. And if I were to actually set system restore or system root to equal the value of my temporary directory, right? Now, if I go ahead and take a look at what system root might be, it is of course my current directory here. But remember when we ran where on RSTR UI, it was actually what the system root was, C colon backslash windows with a system32 subdirectory. So what if we were to create our own system32 directory, present as to where we already are? Looks like I've already kind of tested this, so uh, let me go ahead and clear that out for the sake of showcase. Okay, cool. Uh, I just deleted that through the graphics interface, and now I can make directory system32. Of course, I can DIR that so you see that it exists, and there's nothing presently in it, right? But if I were to try and copy over what would be my C Windows System 32 calc.exe, pop and open the calculator application, what if I put that into my current, wow, it won't let me actually word wrap, that's kind of dumb, uh, System 32 location of RST. Are. are you not gonna give me horizontal scroll? You suck. All right, so please trust me with the fact that I'm literally typing R-S-T-U-I-E-X-E. Uh, and now show me that. Well, I got some random stuff in that directory. That's kind of sketch. Uh, RSTRUI.exe is now within system 32 of my temporary modified system root folder. So I could seriously just run now system 32 RS trui.exe, and that is the calculator application. So that should pop up calc, but it didn't because it doesn't know any sort of DLLs that it might need, right? It's not actually gonna fire that up. What if I actually uh, maybe try to run that copy command, but instead of calc, use something like notepad, notepad.exe, will that run? Yeah, we can go overwrite that, that's fine. Can I run that now? Nope. Still missing some DLL shenanigans. Well, okay, I'll bear with it. Let's see. They did in fact include a little proof of concept here if you wanted to quickly slap in all of the DLL files that are included within legitimate Windows System 32. Notice that they did the exact same thing. Hey, they kind of put our own temporary directory, System 32, as the uh, new system root environment variable, copies all this stuff over and then kind of triggers it. So let's go ahead and grab this syntax here where we stage all this and uh, I think believe they already do what we've done here. So let's just copy this. Uh, I will go ahead and paste all this in and we're gonna lose some of YouTube's bitrate because it takes a little bit of time slapping stuff in here uh, and I'll pause the recording and get back to you as soon as it's ready. Okay, looks like that is done. It has completed. Uh, I will bear in mind that look, that probably isn't again the most realistic thing. Uh, if anything, maybe this is kind of interesting and fun and peculiar. Uh, note that we did in fact set RSTRUI to calc.exe at the moment. So I should at this point be able to run system32 RSTRUI.exe. Fingers crossed, I have a calculator pop open and I do. Now, the real detonator here that we were looking for is going ahead and using that I explore using Internet Explorer to actually invoke this given this odd looking syntax for I explore shell given 3f6 bcd blah 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 blah. Now, if I paste this in, Internet Explorer pops open the calculator application. 
<laughs> kind of weird, kind of wild, kind of peculiar. Uh, but note, I didn't actually see this come to life within Windows 11. In fact, I don't always see this running in even other virtual machines. I don't know if I was just in like some weird spot where it just happened to work for me because I've seen other folks on the old Twitter verse also suggest, look, there was some weird shenanigans going on. What was I doing in this virtual machine? <laughs> Let me close out all this. Oh, I was doing some uh, WMI and moth shenanigans. I was playing with some moth balls. Can you say that? Can I? I don't know. Um, let me go ahead and grab this syntax yet again to run it inside of this Win 11 virtual machine now. Uh, let me fire up the command prompt. Uh, I'll go ahead and full screen this one this time, paste that all in. And you should see this again once this finishes fail, actually not pop open the calculator application, but we'll see some strange error. Uh, I think that other folks are seeing just as well. So maybe, look, maybe this is useless. Maybe this, your mileage may vary. I don't even know why you'd ever want to do this in the first place. Just kind of peculiar. One of my favorite words, right? Okay, that finally finished, uh, and there are a crap load more DLLs within Windows 11 than are in Windows 10. Uh, but if I try to fire this up, you'll notice, whoops, hey, Internet Explorer, the COM plus registry database detected a system error, uh, which is not the calculator. That is not the calculator application. Access is denied. So oddball stuff here is an individual already commented with this. They suggested, look, hey, this is getting access is denied. Wiki says, hey, please share your Windows version number, Win 10, whatever, and he starts to play with it. Uh, so another individual, even on Windows 10, isn't seeing this come through. Maybe your mileage may vary. I don't know whether or not this is kind of a viable thing. I do think it is interesting and peculiar, though, and if anything, it might be a good introduction to some oddball things like these curly braces and numbers. If you haven't seen these before, these are kind of unique identifiers or CLSIDs. Uh, and I'm going to get this wrong, I think. I, I think if I'm exploring this, what is a CLSID? Let me get this description correct here. A CLSID is a globally unique identifier that identifies a COM class object. If your server or container allows linking to embedded objects, you'll need to register a CLSID for each supported class of objects. Now, these are all keys that can represent some Windows applications. And there are a lot of these, by the way. If we scroll through a little bit more of the resources that we can track down online, this one is actually very, very cool. Uh, Strontic x -like uh gets into some super cool details. It says, look, this project attempts to document all executable binaries and eventually scripts that might result in a typical operating system like Windows. Provides a web page to view the data as well as some machine readable formats uh, and that gives some really, really cool stuff. Runtime data of standard out, standard error, etc. File metadata, signatures and hashes and other things. So cool resource. Maybe that's fun to just pour and explore through. Um, some other things that I did want to reference here is that these other shell commands, when you use that sort of shell colon colon prefix or handler, uh, that tells you, look, you're actually going to end up invoking something and it can do some cool stuff. Huntress is getting rave reviews on G2. Check out Huntress. Uh, note that some of these indicate the startup folder. Some of them could actually not be using a CLS ID, but just using a command name like three objects or account pictures or admin tools or app data, et cetera, et cetera. But as you scroll down, there are plenty of others that use the specific CLS ID random string of numbers, that unique identifier that will trigger something specific. Uh, and there are a lot of these. The ones that were listed there have the friendly shell names, but here's the weird oddball stuff that might trigger something else. All these tend to either open up locations or some functionality, or maybe there are some of these that can actually open up its own application like the Bluetooth manager or some autoplay stuff. I don't know if that's its own app or executable, um, but ease of access center, I believe that should be. Maybe some like access accessibility things like sticky keys, et cetera. Uh, you have others here. Of course, we could end up finding our system restore. I don't know if I drove past that. No, here it is, system recovery and system restore. And there's the exact one that we were looking at. So it would be worthwhile to scroll through here and play with which ones of these actually trigger an executable and which one of these are only gonna be looking at the system root environment variable rather than strictly the absolute path C Windows System 32. Because maybe you could control that and play with it in some weird way. 
A little bit odd, a little bit interesting. Wanted to bring this to your attention. Thought it might be kind of interesting. Thought it might be kind of neat to literally, hey, stage Internet Explorer, at least on my host for the moment, to pop calc. <laughs> or any other executable that you want. Maybe things that don't use DLLs like this, maybe your own custom binary so that you could do other damage in some other ethical hacking malicious way. But let me add the stipulation, your mileage may vary. Might not trigger, might not fire. Just thought it was a weird thing. And hey, uh, maybe a cute little video to do something fun with more lol bins. And with that, I think we should close out the video here. I've been rambling for quite a long time, way too long, in fact. And you know what? Hey, if you had some fun with this, if you thought this was kind of weird, kind of neat, kind of interesting, if just anything, maybe something that you've never heard of before, like, ooh, using Internet Explorer as a way to kickstart and run another executable, whether it's super simple, something small like calc or notepad or a binary that you create, something that you write, something that you craft to do other ethical hacking, maybe red teaming, pen testy stuff, whatever. Again, your mileage may vary. Maybe it works in the environment, maybe it doesn't. I don't know. I just thought this one was kind of cool. And I want to share it with you all. Uh, hope you had fun with it. If you did, please do some of those YouTube algorithm things. Like the video, comment, subscribe, anything that could help this channel grow. Super duper grateful for all your support. If you would like to help support in other ways, there's Patreon and PayPal in the video description. Alongside that, there is a link where you can show some love to our sponsors. And that is something that kind of helps us keep doing this, helps create more videos, helps keep driving more future fun, and uh, I just am happy that you're here and along for the ride. Uh, but man, okay, I've been recording for a little bit too long, getting into some uh, crazy fun stuff with energy drinks at two in the morning, and I should call it a day, call it a night. Uh, I'm done. I'm done recording. Thanks so much, everybody. I'll see you in the next video. <laughs>